Hello and welcome in this new episode of the Robin tutorial series. This is probably going to be the last episode of this series and in this episode we are going to cover the Robin refresh functionality. So in the last episodes we have built our models, we have analyzed Robin outputs in order to find the best model for our business and we built the optimal budget allocation for that model. In this video uh, we are going to understand why the Robin refresh functionality is actually so useful for our business because imagine we do all our marketing mix modeling project on our business uh, and then we, we get the budget allocation. We actually uh, try the Robin suggestions but then we want to... those suggestions are going to be good for the first uh, week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month but then we need to, to get new suggestions because maybe we are going to saturate some channels, we are going to, uh, to be simply even a, in another period of the year. So uh, maybe there's going to be an holiday or something like that. So um, whenever we want to, to get new suggestions, we can use the Robin Refresh function. And it works by uh, using all the things that Robin learned already about our business from the previous modeling phase and actually uh, it, it gives the trained model some new data. This is really up to you. Maybe it's going to be uh, two weeks of data. Maybe it's going to be a month of data. Uh, it really depends on your, um, on your use case. And by giving this new data, Robin is going to actually uh, tune the model even more to, to meet these new data this new data, sorry, and then it's going to uh, allow us to rebuild our budget allocation, for instance. So we're going to get new budget allocation based on what happened in the last month, last two weeks or so. Uh, when should we use and when should we not use the budget, the Robin refresh function? As you can see here, or even in the Robin um, documentation, there are a couple situations in which it's better to rebuild the whole model. So uh, let's say our initial model has 100 weeks of data and we are going to add another 80 weeks. So it's pretty much all the new data. The new data is going to be uh, a lot of data, nearly as much as the initial data. That's one case in which we may want to rebuild the whole model and just use uh, the whole data as initial data for the model to train or if we are going to add new variables. So imagine we build our model and then a month later, we decide to try out uh, a new channel for our marketing, maybe LinkedIn, for instance, which we didn't use before. In that case, we need to, to build the model again from the start in order to be able to include LinkedIn inside because the, the Robin refresh function only is only able to refresh an already built model. So we won't be able to add any uh, new kind of variables inside. And the, the Robin refresh function is really simple. It takes as input the Robin object, which we have seen a lot in the previous episodes already, which is basically the path to our um, saved model on, on our computer. Then it takes the, um, the input data, and this can be uh, the path to a new CSV file or, or already a variable, as in our case, we are still using the demo dataset, so uh, we can use the DT simulator weekly. Then there is the um, holidays definition, and here we can use our um, dataset from the demo dataset actually, so the profit, the standard uh, dataset. And then there is the, the part that we need to customize based on our needs. So the, the refresh steps is, in short, how many rows of new data you are passing to Robin. So imagine you have, uh, our, we have our, our weekly dataset, which has approximately 200 weeks of data, and we are going to pass Robin uh, 13 new weeks of data. So we are going to pass a total of 213 weeks of data. That's basically what we are telling Robin. If you have, a, um, whether you have a weekly, a daily, or a monthly data set, that's the amount of new rows you are passing to Robin. Then the refresh mode, you can leave it as auto, and then the iterations and trials. This is simply, as we, seen, as we have seen in the model definition, uh, how many iterations and trials do you want Robin to run in order to build your refresh. You can lower this, higher this, you can test the, the right amount of number for yourself. This is basically uh, what's in the demo that is at, uh, in the demo file already, uh, but as you can see from the, from the comment here, uh, 
even Facebook is still figuring out what's the ideal number. And then there is cluster, which is basically a variable telling Robin, look, cluster by yourself the top models and give me a smaller number, just the really best ones. And I've already executed this code, as we can see in our console down here, uh, just to, to save time in this video. And what happens here is that we built our initial model on a rolling window of uh, approximately 92 weeks. So it's basically up to 2018, November 19th. By giving Robin the whole dataset again, so the whole C DT simulated weekly dataset that you can actually test by yourself and asking them to uh, move forward of 13 weeks, what happened is that Robin built us not only one refresh, but actually four. This is because what Robin found where the was the possibility to actually go forward by 13 weeks at a time for a total of four times. So it actually um, built a refresh, then it's sh it sees that there's still data to use. And so uh, it uses the last refresh to build another refresh on top, another refresh on top, another refresh on top. So for the fourth time, of course, in the case that you are going to add only 13 weeks of data, for instance, on your real uh, um, model, what you're going to get is only the, the RF1, so the refresh one. And once you are going to, um, maybe the, the month later or two months later, you are going to refresh the model again, you are going to get the refresh two and so on. But for now, let's focus on the refresh one folder, which is basically our our uh, refresh. And what we can see here is that we are uh, we have a new set of one pager models with new IDs because these are really um, basically new models. So they learned from the previous. In fact, if you are going to see that the R square tends to be a little higher and the errors are going to be a little lower. And but basically, it's a complete new model that has learned from the previous model and has taken the new data you have passed in order to refresh it. And here on the on this first, first refresh, if you remember from the previous video, we are going to see a situation that is pretty similar still. So uh, the competitor is still the, the main, uh, the main uh, variable actually having an impact on our uh, revenue. Then there is the trend and the, um, the percentages are pretty close. So it's 45 and 36, we can try and have a look at our previous model, which is right here, and go for the first one, for instance. We're going to see that uh, 45 and, uh, sorry, let's get this side by side. You can see here, the percentages change it, and actually uh, something a little, oh, sorry, <laughs> not meant to do this. Okay, so uh, something interested, uh, interesting happened because here, as you can see, this is our first model we built. We have 44.6 and 30% on competitor sales and trend, but then it goes higher to 50, 45, sorry, and 36%. And as you can see here, we had the newsletter as the third uh, impactful variable we can say but now the newsletter has gone down to the fourth position and TV has gone up to the to the third so uh, actually what happened is basically Robin saw the new data and made some adjustments because uh, he may have misunderstood what the uh, the initial impact was so uh, this is something that you you will see a lot if you do several refreshes you will see how Robin adjusts his, adjusts uh, its um, consideration. And one really cool uh, plot that you will find inside your refresh folder is going to be the um, report actual fitted PNG. This is basically showing you the uh, initial model. So the part with the white background is what the initial model was built on. And as you can see here, red is actual and green is predicted. And then you're going to see the 13 weeks of new data that you pass to Robin, and now the, the line starts fitting better and better. And actually the assembler that has, um, our squared, sorry, is going higher to 95% as the initial was uh, around 90, 90, 93. 
And if we go, we have seen the, the first refresh here. If we go to the fourth one, we are probably going to see even better results. So we can check the uh, actual versus fitted as the first one. Okay, we see here that our, our, our square is actually stable, but if you take a look at the graph, you are going to see how much closer and closer the, the predicted values get to the actual values. And this is really interesting and cool to see how Robin is always tuning and getting better and better by new data uh, given to the, um, to the models. And we can take a quick look at one of the one-pager models over here. Let's zoom in a little. And you see, this is the, the fourth refresh. So um, it's actually approximately uh, over 50 new weeks of data given to Robin. And the R-square here has gone from a 92% to nearly 96%, which is really high. And the, the error's gone down. And actually, um, here we see a situation really similar to the to the first refresh we have just seen. And then you can basically just rebuild the budget allocation on these new refresh models and always get uh, new and accurate um, and accurate suggestions. So there's a lot more to Robin than what we have covered in this course. This course was meant to basically introduce you to Robin, show you how Robin works and how you can use Robin in your business in order to, to find a lot of interesting things and actually uh, optimize your uh, budget allocation. However, Robin can allow you to tune hyperparameters manually, can allow you to um, actually calibrate the model by using uh, GeoLift or conversion lift strategies, and you can actually calculate marginal results and a lot of other more uh, technical, we can say, kind of functionalities. But this, with, with the things we have covered in this video, you already have a, a great idea, a great starting point of what Robin is, how you can use Robin, and actually you can start uh, testing Robin by yourself, start getting used to that, and maybe you can then uh, find out some, find out more about Robin from time to time. So thank you so much for watching this course. In case you have any kind of question, feel free to, to ask them in the comments below. And if you guys want to, to see more about Robin, how it can be used in a real world scenario, and these other features that are, uh, are available in Robin, such as marginal results and such, just let us know in the comments below and we will uh, be more than happy to um, add new episodes to this course. Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice day. Bye. Hey, this is the future me and I would just like to add one quick thing before closing up this video. As I said in the first episode where I introduced myself, I'm currently one of the co-founders and CTO of Cassandra. And if you have arrived till this point of the video, you are probably really, really interested into marketing mix modeling and now you can use marketing mix modeling either in your organization or for your clients. And we strongly hope that this course was helpful and it gave you the tools to get started into the marketing mix modeling world by yourself. But in case you want to, um, to talk with us to understand whether we may be the partner for your organization in order to implement the marketing mix modeling, we will be more than glad to help you with everything. In Cassandra, we can uh, actually manage all the steps from the data synchronization to the data warehouse in which we uh, clean, format and aggregate all the data up to the, to the modeling process and putting, putting the, modeling, the models into production so that you don't have to worry about anything and every two weeks or every month you are going to get your uh, updated uh, insights on your models. So uh, if, you want to, um, if you want to have a chat about this, you can find all our links in the description below. You can get to our landing page and just book a free demo uh, which is basically a call where we showcase Cassandra to you. So uh, thanks a lot again and really uh, have fun with your marketing mix modeling projects. Bye.